I'm Peter Zemsky, Deputy Dean and Professor of Strategy at INSEAD. It's my great pleasure to be here with Michael Goritz, the CIO of Standard Charter Bank. And we're gonna really dig into the effect of digital transformation of financial services at big successful incumbents and what the pandemic is doing to those trajectories. Michael, if you could start by maybe telling us a little bit about what's your vision been for technology and innovation more broadly at Standard Charter. Yeah, hi, Peter. And actually it's a great pleasure to spend some time with you today. Well, what we did at Standard Charter then just for background, Standard Charter is a bank who has been operating uh, for 160 years in Asia, Middle East and Africa. Uh, what we have been doing since 2015, we are massively and very consequently um, uh, uh, turning ourselves into digital uh, banking, uh, the way of working uh, in digital transformation. That means uh, we are, we are uh, pivoting this bank uh, to be a true digital bank with the human touch. And obviously this is only possible by a massive amount of uh, investment uh, from the technology side. And that's what we did you know, since uh, 2015. Uh, we ramped up our investments and in every corner of the bank, uh, we make sure that we um, uh, bring our, our systems uh, to the latest level, to the latest technology and stay with our systems and our services as close as possible to our clients which is actually the, the heart and soul of digital transformation. It means that all the transactions of our clients, both on the retail and the wholesale side, uh, wish to uh, uh, perform, that they can do it uh, with, a, with a fingertip uh, from their uh, screen or their mobile phones. We have been quite successfully uh, renovated all the, the tra transactional uh, processes uh, towards that target. And we are not stopping there, but we are doing more and more in order to make the life of our clients more convenient. Um, maybe we could dig a little bit into the human side, both with you know, your employees and, and, and your customers. How have you really um, overcome the adoption hurdles in, in that path? Things like cloud and mobile, agile. Um, how, how, how have you moved the, the whole organization forward? And what have your key learnings been on that journey? Well, that's a very good question. And uh, it, it took us a while to to, to really um, uh, grab this uh, digital transformation uh, with all uh, the, the parts of the organization. In the beginning, it was just uh, 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 the intention and an idea, but, but now since we, we have uh, formed and regrouped our, uh, our bank into a, a, a new setup, uh, which we call the new ways of working, we see that we have more and more feedback and uh, success with our progress going forward. Let me give you an example. In, in Africa, uh, we have been serving roughly like a million uh, customers in retail uh, across a, a wide uh, a variety of countries, uh, predominantly in Sub-Saharan Africa. In 2018, we started to build a, a full mobile bank on top of our existing stack of technology stack. So we formed a digital uh, team uh, which had representation in each of the countries. We paired that digital team uh, with the best technologists uh, of our company. We took the existing stack and we built, as I said, um, an engagement layer uh, for the mobile, which actually took the 70 essential services, what you would need from a bank and crammed it into this little mobile phone uh, and offered it uh, to the customers in Africa, including uh, essential services like onboarding, which now in most of the countries is fully digital, no bad signature needed, everything done by your mobile phone. Mm -hmm. And as we have rolled out these services in the respective countries, we have seen that customers are massively actually taking advantage of this uh, service. And uh, we just, uh, the, the other day, we onboarded, uh, we, we have passed 400,000 additional customers onboarded through these um, uh, digital services. And this obviously uh, has created a lot of excitement within the bank. And now we are tuning and looking very carefully, how can we improve these digital services in order to uh, gain more customers and obviously uh, give even better service to our customers? Um, well, I, again, it raises the question, I guess, of what the pandemic is, is doing in terms of both accelerating adoption in the market 
but also throwing up new challenges in terms of how you operate internally. Um, could you start sharing some of, some of the big effects, including it back in those sub-Saharan markets from this, this pandemic? Well, it, the pandemic, as you know, was not just uh, regionally um, uh, concentrated, but it was a global pandemic. We saw the pandemic starting in, in China and uh, a very uh, fast spreading over Asia and then uh, the West. Uh, since the, the beginning of the pandemic, or actually before the pandemic, uh, just to give you a number, we have been roughly half 5,000 people working from home at any point in time. Uh, and uh, during the, uh, the high time of the lockdowns, we had nearly 100% of all the employees uh, working from home. I think the highest number was something like 75,000 employees uh, being uh, locked in from, uh, from their homes. So what we had to do from a technology department, we had to activate all the different services, which we had pre-built. They were in our, uh, in our portfolio, but they were not activated. So um, in some sleepless nights and weekends, we had to plug in a few VPN channels, um, enable uh, a few other services for, for mobile uh, and video communication. And luckily, we were able to really uh, keep up our services with no glitches. We kept our employees connected to each other. And more important, uh, we kept our employees connected to our clients uh, with, the, uh, with the digital services we are offering. Just to give you a number, we saw here in Singapore that the elderly, so people um, uh, older than uh, 55 years, we saw an increase, a steep increase in digital um, uh, usage. So more than 57% of mobile usage uh, from, from this age group, which is quite astonishing because it first of all means we had the opportunity and the possibility. And the second is uh, everybody is able to use digital services. Sometimes they need a little bit of a nudge uh, in order to go there. Are you expecting on the customer side that this shift in behavior will be sticky? Um, hopefully once the pandemic is behind us, do you see this as a, a lasting shift in consumer behavior? Absolutely. And, and I can support this with numbers. What, what I'm seeing is that the uh, the, the net promoter score, which is the, 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 the KPI with which we um, measure the, the, the content, or the, the, mm. the confidence uh, of our customers, is actually going up and up and up. So people really appreciate uh, the, um, uh, the services and there is no sign of, of uh, falling off or tapering off of these numbers. So they, they keep increasing uh, day by day. To go into maybe for a little bit into the internal side, if this thing had hit three, four years ago, do you think you could have maintained the same level of business continuity? This seems like it was a real moment of truth for your years of digital transformation. Yeah, actually, um, it, as you said, uh, three, four years ago, it would have been a little bit tougher. And uh, simply because of the fact that um, our end user services were not built out to that extent as it is today. And also internally, uh, the way people uh, work with uh, remote working, uh, VPNs and all these kind of things um, was not that solid as it was today. So therefore the investment which we have put in uh, in the last five, five years really paid off. And uh, it, it, I mean, it never hits you at the right time, but it, it was uh, certainly much better today than it would have been five years ago. And in terms of stickiness, are there discussions within Standard Charter about the future of remote work? Are, are you guys forming a point of view on how much will happen in the office versus at home um, post pandemic? Absolutely. Um, we have, it, during the pandemic, just by, by chance, we had a, an employee survey. And um, in that employee survey, and afterwards, we, we asked our employees, so how do you feel? How is everything going? And also, we asked them, uh, what is uh, the likelihood that you that you want to return or uh, your, your willingness to return to the office? And actually, 78% um, of our employees responded that they would lo uh, love to work uh, two or three days uh, from home going forward. So this obviously now um, has stimulated a, a couple of discussions. So first of all, with our uh, HR department, you know, the, how do we get your hands around the contractual relationships and all these kind of things? But more important, uh, the, 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 the discussion, how do we structure work in the future? So what is the right moment for us uh, to join 
and meet and socialize in the office? And where, what is the right moment or what is more, when is it more appropriate to be at home and uh, do some focused work uh, because you want to have, sorry for that, <laughs> the light is going on and off. Um, so when, when is the right moment to, to stay at home and do your focused work there? We probably will, will um, find ourselves in a balance yeah, of the two modes of working. And this differs or this different will be differentiated a little bit by the regions. You know, in some regions, people don't have the, the real circumstances at home to, uh, to have a, a studio or whatever to, to uh, focus on uh, important things to do. Uh, while in other uh, um, uh, countries or regions, uh, they, they, they might have uh, better circumstances at home. So we, we have to adapt to this going forward. Very clear. Maybe um, as we look towards the end here, what um, so exciting times to be a CIO in financial services, a lot of acceleration. What kind of new horizons, new um, opportunities do you see uh, in digital transformation over the coming years? Both, you know, especially in some of the core products and services you're, you're bringing out to the market. Well, first of all, it's it's <clears throat> exciting to see the uh, the movement in the in the industry uh, coming up. I mean, there are a lot of fintech companies um, which um, uh, entered uh, the space, and uh, the position of Standard Chartered was always, well, uh, fintech is just great because it will uh, eventually uh, improve the services which we give to our clients, and therefore. Uh, we have started very early on uh, to integrate the offering as much as we can into our service portfolio. If you some examples, uh, we uh, in our financial crime compliance uh, team, uh, where we had to work through a lot of of um, of alerts uh, from uh, <coughs> money. <coughs> Sorry, I start over. In our financial crime compliance team, where we uh, have to work on a lot of compliance related issues, um, th there are a lot of uh, uh, manual steps to go through. Uh, so we, we looked into um, companies who can help us with uh, artificial intelligence to go through the, the amount of, of alerts and actually um, separate the ones which are really urgent and we, where we should really focus on and actually leave them uh, to the human analysts uh, to focus on. So that was very successful or in other areas, we use uh, fintech companies helping us with the onboarding. So in Africa, which I met, uh, mentioned earlier, uh, the digital onboarding process uh, goes with face recognition and document recognition. Uh, so we use the services of um, uh, companies coming from the outside and uh, tie them into our portfolio. The second is sometimes it's very, we, um, uh, we think, oh, that there is something which we could do and uh, so we found our own uh, fintech companies. Uh, an example is uh, Solve, which is a platform for uh, small and medium-sized uh, enterprises, uh, which brings uh, services of all kinds of uh, all nature, all kinds of uh, well, all kinds of services together uh, in the platform: financial services, logistical services, uh, buyers and sellers uh, who can meet them on this platform. So these are. Uh, areas where we experiment uh, and uh, areas where we really uh, go mainstream uh, with fintech companies. Michael, very exciting times. Thank you for sharing with us. Maybe just we have 30 seconds left. One piece of advice, you've a long track record now as a CIO. Imagine someone taking over as CIO in a big bank. What, what one piece of advice might you, you have for someone and putting on your shoes? Well, at the moment, uh, it's, as you said, uh, the, the most exciting time I can ever uh, think of. Um, so therefore, what's, what's super important as a CIO, you stay very, very close uh, to your business. You stay very close to the client and uh, help the business to establish, to enable all these digital services with all your power. Don't, don't dig yourself in, in the back end and, and, and try to harmonize something there. That's also important. But to be at the, at the front with a client, that's the most thing. And that's where you have to be at the moment. Words of wisdom, Michael. Thank you very much for spending time with us and sharing your um, fascinating experience.